Welcome back, Zero K fans. This is Jedi 53 with another game between Feltas and Ivan D. This time it's going to be on Lowland Crossing, which, frankly, is not much better than Coagulation Marsh when it comes to the whole pathfinding and units getting stuck on small little land bridges through water. Expect lots of turtle. Get your popcorn, because we're going to be here for a bit of a turtle shell match. Probably. So... Yeah, anyway. Gonna be getting onto that right away. Not much more to be said. Once again, fail thoughts on Ivan D. Let's go. Yeah, fail thoughts won the last game. So I guess this, was, this these were replays in order. I'm assuming it was between the two of them. Possibly first to two or something. I don't know. This is the second replay. So I guess if Failthos wins, it's first to two, and if Ivan D wins, then I guess they just set it a call it a draw. We'll see. Anyway, Failthos going for Kluibot. Very quick nib. Counter to Glaive. On this map, that makes total sense. I mean, look at all the reclaim. Look at it all. It's huge. Like, 1,000 metal, 600 some odd energy, just in the starting area alone. And Ivan D pretty much went for the same thing. Conch right off the bat, and Amphib bot, by the way. Amphib bought for Ducks and Conch. Interesting choice. On this map, that makes sense. We did see actually last time I showed this map that Amphib's working extremely well because they don't have to worry about this land bridge. Although I think it was Amphib and Light Vehicle. But yeah, Amphibs do pretty well on this map just because the land just works. I think it was Lowry and... Is it Lowry and Drone? I want to say it wasn't. Oh, sorry. Cuba and Google Frog. That's who it was. Yeah, that's right. Cuba was like vehicles, Google Frogs, Amphibious Bots, and Amphibious Bots did a wonderful job, especially since they could just stay in the center and pretty much hold the center from underwater. And not much can be done about that with light vehicles. However, Cloaky Bots have a little bit of an easier time. They can take this all three land bridges, not just the center one. So using Amphibs to block them off is a little bit harder, but Amphibs still has the entire center area and this area here too to hide in and to heal in. Because Amphibs do heal faster underwater. So Ivan D's just massing up ducks. Got about half a dozen ducks, one of which is inside of Felthos' base, the other five inside of Ivan D's. Felthos going for a counterattack with three glaives, a bit of counter raiding. Just to poke Ivan D a bit, just figure out what's going on, where Ivan D is located, and what's going on at the start there. And Ivan D sees this coming, moves that conch straight into the water to avoid any problems, and then loses a small nano frame, but really not much. And the ducks are able to take out a couple glaives. Wow, nice shots there. Free glaives. Two free glaives. The last one able to escape, but the other two go down without issue. And the last set of glaives also goes down. Ivan D doing a really good job. Very, very nice start here. I mean, Ivan D could probably push in with these ducks. Oh yeah, the glaive is gone. Ivan D can push. Ivan D can push hard. These ducks could probably sweep this entire thing right now. And it looks like Ivan D doesn't seem totally confident. Grouping, okay. Ivan D's just regrouping at this point. Once Ivan D regroups, we'll see what happens. No orders have been queued yet. And Ivan D just getting more conscious and ducks has reclaimed areas around their base, as has actually Felthos not so much. Felthos is reclaiming a bit with one of the conjurers, but that's it. Rather surprising, Ivan D on the other hand is just hanging out, harassing around the back, and there's that push! Moving in, although Ivan D does go straight for the Lotus, which is a little bit unfortunate. In fact, gonna lose a duck right off the bat to that Lotus, and the second one does not die, but gets heavily damaged as to go back into the water. That was not as well done as it could have been. However, Ivan D really losing momentum. Actually, with the Zeus here, pretty much lost all the momentum. Those ducks were in a really good position to just push in and kill. But no, Ivan D instead going for the contain, which I do not agree with in this situation. Ducks do not have the health to contain. Like 340 health, that is not going to stop anything. What they have is the damage potential to simply sweep through and wipe out at least half of this at this point. It could have been all this, but a lot of stack defense has been built up. The Zeus's have been built up. A lot has changed. Boys are being built up as well for Ivan D and Zeus coming in for Failthos, Zeus and Conjurer. So these ducks can't do much. The ducks have grouped up to get together a bit, but the Zeus, I mean, that's a lot of health. 2400 health. Yeah, the ducks aren't going to take that out anytime soon. It's just too late at this point, unfortunately. So, Ivan D, switching to boys is a good idea. Getting... What else is there? Oops. 
Well, scallops aren't bad, and archers, I think, would actually do okay. I'm not sure. Actually, I don't think they would. 280 to 300. Actually, archers might do okay. I don't know if Zeus's are too heavy for the archers to deal with, though. That's a bit of a tricky one, but... Really, Ivan D did at least expand while they were pushing forward. They have a lot of reclaim to work with. They don't have a huge amount of security on their territory, though. But because they don't have to worry about anything other than the land bridges, at least that gives them a bit more flexibility. However, Ivan D has pushed... Sorry. Feldas has pushed Ivan D out of the territory. Wait, is this... Oh, I see. Weird. Anyway. Feldas has pushed Ivan D out of their territory. And... Okay, Carp, you have a lot of things to test with this... This widget, unfortunately. Which is rather unfortunate. Say, wait, is it? Oh, for crying out loud. Sorry about this. Apparently, the factory panel widget just broke on me because of the vision changes. That's a little odd. Anyway. As I was saying, Ivan D does have a switch over to Scallop and Boy, which is not a bad idea. Boys do have enough health to be able to last through the Zeus, Zeus pretty well, and 450 range, that will also work. Actually, probably works better. Also against the Rockos, slows everything down, and no splash, that's one thing. Archers, that's the one nice advantage, they just break up the opponent's forces, and then everything else can just destroy them. Just divide and conquer. Very efficient that way. Yeah. Operates in logarithmic time. Which I'm actually pretty sure that more people in this community are going to get than any other game that I've casted. With the poss possible exception of Akron. But Thalethos is. Well, securing this middle. Getting the south side. Ivan D taking the north side as well. So the economy wise, they're pretty much even. Thalethos is way ahead energy wise though. This one, Geoplant. That's 25 energy right there. Bit of a difference. And Ivan D switches over to gunships, or at least adds gunships to the repertoire, which, given the fact that they are accessing metal at 30, not surprising they do so. A little surprising they are building a caretaker first, though. I've mentioned before that you build a caretaker and then build a factory. It takes 50 seconds in total. Or uh, roughly 50 seconds in total. The caretaker costs 22 seconds, well, 20, 220 metal. So for one commander, that's 22 seconds. And the factory would normally cost 600 metal, so 60 seconds for one commander, but together it's 30 seconds between the commander and the caretaker, so it's a total of 52 seconds. But Ivan D doesn't seem interested in shaving off that time, which is a little bit odd. Especially given that Ivan D has 32 energy, sorry, 32 metal and energy. So they have a great position for building up caretakers, they could easily do so. Instead, however, they are building up side defenses at the front at the same time, getting the Stardust up, along with the Faraday. All the small static defenses being built up, basically preventing Philthos from attacking that strongly. Granted, with all of these Rockos, I'm not sure how strong that's going to be. Rockos have 455 range and Faraday has 460. So the Rockos will be stunned out trying to attack the Faradays, but I think one volley of Rockos will kill that Faraday, causing it to not be that big of a deal. However, the boys are still keeping the Faraday, sorry, keeping the Rockos at bay. So ultimately, Philthos will not be able to push through the Sharpshooter, however, they will be able to. And switching over to Conjurer, and getting a couple quick non-repeat Conjurers up, and then back over to repeat Rockos. Kind of surprised though, Felthas is not building up much in the main base. They are building a lot of units. They're going for a nice eraser strategy there, while Ivan D on the other hand has gotten their gunship plant up. They haven't started building anything yet, though. I don't know if they've noticed. Probably going for the Geo plant first. Yeah, gunship plant now up, and boys going in for... Getting killed. Okay, one of the boys has a massive death wish, and it has been granted! Well done, boy, you successfully died. Unfortunately, that does Ivan D no favors. The scallops, on the other hand, will do Ivan D plenty of favors, especially since they can just jump out of the water very easily as the Rockos cross the land bridge, surround them, and kill them. And that's exactly what's gonna happen, although I think Ivan D may have jumped the gun a bit, especially since Sharpshooter came in here, but still, doesn't matter. The Rockos are stuck. Feldas not even moving them, not even noticing this at this point. Feldas, what is Feldas looking at? No, Feldas is looking at this, has finally started paying attention, but... Whoops. Don't need to focus on that anymore. Feldas finally starting to pay attention, but these Rockos, many of them just went down. However, so did all of the Scallops. I think that there were fewer Rockos than Scallops that went down, and doesn't matter though. Feldas can reclaim this entire set. Everything here can be reclaimed. So, I don't... 
I don't know. At the same time, the center coming in. The Eraser paying off with four Cloaked Zeus's trying to break through the Stardust. The operative word being trying. Because they certainly did not succeed. That was extremely powerful defense. However, on the east side of the map, there weren't that many defenses, and the Rock was able to almost break through, but Ivan D able to stop with units. Failed us. At this point, build a nuke silo. I'm not kidding. This is a map where nuke silos happen. Not the silencer much, just the missile silo, the standard missile silo. But still, that happens. And then, well, maybe not Inferno. Actually, Shockley on this, followed by all these rockers coming in, will probably do the trick. Yeah, 70, oh, sorry, that's, how much is that each? Yeah, 1,500 each. Yeah, I think that would do the trick. But no, we do not see that. Inferno might work too, but yeah, I don't know. I think Shockley would be the thing to go for. But instead, Gunship Plant. And incidentally, we are seeing Brawlers coming up from Ivan D. Two so far. Ooh, boy. Failthos is not going to be pleased to see that. I mean, the Gunship Plant is coming up, so Tridents are a possibility. They can definitely be built up and used effectively. More Zeus is coming up as well, but they are not really in position or very existent. How many Zeus's are there? There are two, one of which is in production. That brawler has free reign to roam the map, and this, oh wow, Geo Plant's turning into a Moho Plant. The brawlers are going to have a field day if they find this. Three so far. Fourth is very nearly done. Six seconds away from, sorry, three seconds away from being done. Not sure when Ivan D is going to push out, though. It's really tricky. I mean, Felthos does have enough to counter air at this point, but hasn't actually built anything with the gunship plant yet. It's still completely inactive. Ivan D's... Sorry, Felthos is looking at this yet. But hasn't built anything with it. Oh, there we go. Never mind. Switching over to Crow. Holy crap. Okay, so a Crow is coming up. That's 4,500 metal. 30 per second. And it's going to take about... Four minutes from the looks of it. A crow. I should point out that the brawlers are moving up for Ivan D. Next one's going to take a couple minutes because Ivan D is prioritizing everything else from the looks. Oh, no, maybe not. Okay, never mind. Not sure why that was taking a while, but yeah, Ivan D moving with the brawlers, and that is a very tough push. However, they ran right into the Zeus's. Probably the worst angle of approach. Not killing any of the Lotuses, so no easy follow up, unfortunately. However, they are able to get rid of the caretakers, and that crow. Yeah, that crow's not even going to be close to built. In fact, that crow was destroyed already, and the gunship plant soon following. The gremlins are being built up, but in fact, Pokemon Factory gets hit. It can be locked down, and that's what brawlers do best. Lock down factories. Down goes Cloaky Factory. Down goes Caretakers. Down goes, well, not even gunship plant. Actually, Trident's on the gunship plant wouldn't be a bad idea. The brawlers are not paying attention to it at all. The sharpshooter even went for a shot. Missed completely. The Zeus's, however, are doing well for anti-air, but that's the best anti-air that exists here. And that Moho plant about to go down. The commander already gone down, and... Wow, Moho Plant, down like a nuke. <laughs> One upside is that it did take out all the Brawlers. Very heavily damaged thanks to that Moho Plant destruction. But, Failthos, I'm not sure what they can do to recover here. Bear in mind, more Brawlers have been being built up this entire time, and they can approach from other angles as well. But, because that Moho Plant explosion was so big, the Brawlers don't have anywhere to go. However, they do have, over to the Northwest, where a razor is there to greet them, there to kiss them goodnight, or, well... Well, that pun would have worked. They changed the name. Ah, uh, no consideration for humor. At any rate, Failthos does have... a lot of harassment coming in here, and Ivan D has doubled the economy, doubled the army, or... no, less than doubled the army, but still does have a very large army, and a massive amount of boys and scallops, or at least in terms of cost. Boys and scouts coming in here. That's, yeah, 2,000 cost worth of units against, well, about the same cost from Faelthas. But that will not work out too well for Faelthas. I'm afraid more than that because the Brawler's on top of that. Just on the ground is 2,000 metal, and the Brawler's coming in with even more assistance. Distracting the Sharpshooters as well, which is not the best use of the Sharpshooter. They can't easily hit the Brawlers. They could easily hit the Boys and Scallops, but they are not. And with that, I don't see how Failthos can really come back. It's going to be hard. There is, however, Gremlin set coming in here on the west side of the map, thanks to a new Cloakybot factory, which is working out actually decently well. The Gremlins are chasing away the Brawlers, but the Scallops and Boys are already in. The, the beach has been established. 
Ivan D already has a path in. I mean, basically everywhere. This this west side, the southwest side of Feltos' base is the only area that's even defended at all that's left. Everything else is undefended. Ivan D can run roughshod over Feltos' entire base and is doing so. Everything's been dedicated to anti-air defense at this point. And the anti-ground defense has been pretty laughable when it comes to these boys and scallops. They're not going to be able to deal with that. And the brawlers actually have a pretty good position too. I mean, the gremlins can't easily attack without revealing themselves. And the scallops and boys on the ground will kill them if they do. I mean, as you can see, they actually are already. The hacksaw really being the only credible threat. And that's going to go down fairly quickly as well. There it goes. That hacksaw's gone down. And really, there's not much to say here. Failthos... Having to deal with all these incoming forces while the Brawler is just finishing off the rest of Feltos' base. And Ivan D hasn't got much other than an easy win. That's all Ivan D has. It's Ivan D's game to lose at this point, and I don't think they're going to do that. They're just going pretty... They're being safe. Scallops and boys, and they're not going for anything fancy like a grizzly right off the bat when a lot of their army has been destroyed in Feltos' base. They're just getting another army, rebuilding it, and... Sending it in. While the Brawlers are being forced back a bit by the Razors and Rockers are managing to stave off the boys, the east side of the Failthos' base is gone. Ivan D has easily four times the economy of Failthos. And, sorry, four times the army of Failthos, if we discount the commander. Has twice the economy easily. And the only downside is the fact that this, these Razors are being a problem, as are the Gremlins. The Brawlers can't easily move in. I mean, they have a lot of health, but... They're not immortal. The boys, however, are... Well, oh, so they're, not, they're not immortal as well, but they're far closer when it comes to these forces. The, the gremlins won't do anything, the razors won't do anything, and the Rockos will do something, but then again, the brawlers will do a lot back. Hit them far harder. And they get rid of the conjurers as well. Those conjurers go down. The conjurers are actually a bit of a threat because they can reclaim keeping Feldhaus' economy level. Building up a caretaker to do exactly that so Felthos does have a bit of a chance as a result of this. Though Felthos is not in the best position, I'm afraid. Still, Ivan D just can't easily be hit at this point. Can't easily be attacked. Felthos could go for Missile Silo to try to break down this area down here. Granted, the Brawlers would probably go straight for it, but still, that's kind of hard to do. It's, yeah, I don't really know what Feldhaus can do at this point. Ivan D is just so far ahead that there aren't many options. I'm not sure there are any options, to be quite frank. And Ivan D is just straight up winning. So it looks like it. they did just call it a draw. Assuming that Ivan D won, it looks like they just called it a draw afterwards because it's going to be one and one. Or they weren't playing it as a series. I should point out this is actually in the release right before the win counter became something that everyone had publicly, so... I don't know. I mean, it's going to take a while, if if ever, for that idea to actually trickle down into the rest of the community. But I like the idea. I don't know. I'm just, just trying to push it, because I'm... I'm thinking in terms of so many different games at once. Regardless, Ivan D is being pushed back. Philthos did manage with a stinger to get forward. I do think that... Ivan D just, as long as they clump up a bit, I mean, against the, they could actually build a Grizzly right now. Now wouldn't be a bad time. Ivan D has the economy. Ivan D, I mean, oh, Grizzlies are what? Oh, 2,000, okay. Yeah, so Ivan D would take about a minute to build a Grizzly, but they have 10,000 metal to 2.6 in terms of army. And they have so much defenses that Ivan D could just wait around, build a Grizzly or two, and use that to rip apart the Rockos. However, it looks like they're just going to go for the more, the, I guess you could say, safer option, the more typical option of Boy Scallop Duck. The Ducks being primarily used to deal with the Rockos directly, while the Boys and Scallops deal, taking all that damage. Just tanking everything, and Brawlers coming in as well. Half a dozen Brawlers now to get soften up those Rockos. The Gremlins pushing them away a bit, but the Rockos get softened up. Half of them get destroyed. The rest of them get weakened. And getting rid of these Metal Tractors as well, just to stop Feltos from rebuilding, because obviously... If Ivan D lets Felthos rebuild and reclaim, that won't be good. In fact, Ivan D does have some sharpshooters coming in on top of that. Yep, sharpshooter and Rocco as well. Sorry, Felthos doing that. Ivan D just pushing out ducks. Just how many? Thirty-three ducks. 
Not taking the best angle, though. The Stinger able to take out two of them in one go, but the rest of them are going to be able to push in. And despite the losses, just... Damn the losses, they're going to go in. They're going to tear apart everything in Feldos' base, and I think that's going to be game. I think these ducks... These 30 ducks will do what the earlier half dozen could not, or would not, and rip apart Feldos' base with their bearer torpedoes. And of course, at the same time, we have a lot of races being built up. Really, not the best priority for defense. Not a bad priority, but not the best priority because, well, the ducks. The ducks have moved in, and they are going to finish this off. Although they will, they might kill themselves on the fusion plant. That's the only hope that Felthos has, is they might actually kill themselves on the fusion plant or the geo plant. Especially if the fusion chains the geo with this explosion, which it might just... No, it does not. It heavily damages the Geo and quite a few of the ducks, but there are still about 20... No, 34 ducks still. The ducks are being built fast enough. I mean, they're taking a second to build. And down goes the Geo plant, killing more ducks. Doesn't matter, though. Down goes the factory fairly soon. Or just about. That solar plant being a bit of a problem. And the ducks themselves hitting each other, as they are wont to do. Because ducks are the masters of unfriendly fire. So only two ducks left in the base. I think at least half a dozen ducks died to each other. But still, streaming in from the front, along with the boys and scallops. This is pretty much game. And the brawlers, of course, just hanging around the back. No brawlers are being built from this point. As you can see, there's none being built. Seven are just hanging out there. The razors will be going down soon enough. Actually, the razors are pretty much the only thing buying Failthos time. Well, as long as Ivan D's not looking at that. But yeah, Failthos throws in the towel. That is game. And Ivan D wins, and it's one and one with no follow-up game. So... Of a disappointment that there was no final tiebreaker game in this one. Sorry about that, guys. But that, well, that still was that. So I hope you enjoyed that. That'll be it for me tonight, by the way. I'm, I just had those replays to cast. So thanks for watching and have a good night, everyone.